Hey guys, welcome to Trimming the Fat. I'm having technical issues. Everybody else is laughing at me and Adam sounds like a robot once in a while, but we're going to do an episode called Mind Over Matter because you know what? We don't mind we're having these problems. They don't matter. We're still going to do this episode. That's right. So now back to fix my errors if I can. Uh, so guys, what makes us want to do this, uh, episode mind over matter? I think it's a, it's a big, big deal with it. Like, uh, you gotta have that right mindset. You gotta, yeah, you just gotta have that mindset or it's not going to work. You gotta, like for me, I've told myself, uh, you know, a thousand times, I'm starting my diet or I'm starting to lose weight. Tomorrow's the day and tomorrow came and, you know, it was never, I never tried. Um, so I feel like a lot of people could benefit from this. Right. Well, I, I would, go ahead, Corey. I was going to say, I think kind of got started on it when I always have that problem of, I guess you call it a problem is when I go to enter my weight, you know, three times a week or so I'm always putting a much lower number. I'm always dropping at least a hundred pounds or 200 pounds. Like this morning I weighed myself. And when I went to enter it in my little log that I have is I put 168 pounds. That's not real, but that's just what I automatically put. I didn't even think about it until I looked at my graph and it's like, why is it such a big step here? That's odd looking. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I realized, well, that says 168. No, I'm, not, I'm still, I'm still fat. <laughs> I, I got to <laughs> fix that. But you know, it's something where my mind's already made up that I'm there. I'm, I'm, you know, in my two hundreds or below, that's where I'm at. I'm not, I'm not at the weight that I am mentally. I'm going somewhere. So I think that's kind of, the mentality I have to have to be able to stay on track. Yeah. Adam, you were going to say something. Yeah, I know. I mean, for me, the, the mind over matter thing, and you can hear me, right? Yep. Blink, yep. blink twice if you can hear me. Uh, <laughs> well, for, in, in my situation, um, you know, I've had a very rough couple of weeks uh, in my personal life um, dealing with house stuff, dealing with personal loss, but it's the same thing. I mean, like that doesn't matter. I got to get my mind right and I got to get my stuff together and stay on track for me. Right. So when I do my workouts or I'm, I'm eating right, it, that, that thing's for me. And that's what keeps my mind sharp, even though everything else is going on. And sometimes it does matter, but at the end of the day, it, this too shall pass. Right. And I'm not going to throw away, you know, two, three years worth of hard work just because stuff's not going my way for a couple of weeks. So, I mean, that's why I thought it was a, definitely a good topic uh, on my end. And then Corey, Corey just left. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, with, with that, like uh, you can't, you can't let these hard, hard times or these, these big issues that, I mean, they're going to affect our life, but you can't have them define our story. You know, um, we've got to keep, keep on trucking, you know, um, it's okay to, to be down and it's okay to, you know, have these bad days, bad weeks, bad, whatever. Um, but you, you've just got to, you've got to keep it up. Like you said, you know, um, throwing away all that work that you did prior for me, I think about that all the time. Like if I, the first time I tried to lose weight, I lost a bunch of weight. I looked good. I was buff, you know, um, and I quit. And all that weight came back and now even trying to lose weight, I get frustrated sometimes thinking, where would I be if I would have continued, if I would have, if I would have stayed on it. So, yeah, I mean, to, to bring that back, it's just, uh, we can't let these hard things define our, our lives. We've got to keep pushing forward. Right. And that's the thing. It's not about if you fall off or what happens it's how you get back on. And I think that for all of us, if we were successful the first time, we wouldn't have learned so much about ourselves and about the process and gotten ourselves to the point we're at right now in a positive sense. Right. 
I think that if everyone does it the first time really easy, they take it for granted and they, they, they don't put a whole lot of value in it. But I, I know for all three of us and, and for millions and millions of people at home, I mean, everyone has a struggle with it. I mean, it's, it's, you're not mentally ready or you don't have the right resources handy or you don't know what to do or the right questions to ask or where to start. But yeah, I just lost my own train of thought. That's great. <laughs> All right. I, I seen a post earlier today on one of the forums that I follow. And it was this girl who uh, started out at an X amount of weight and she was down to, you know, 130 pounds and had the thought that she was still a cow. And I went to her pictures that she posted and I went to some previous ones and at her starting weight, she wasn't a cow and she wasn't ugly at all. She, you know, there was nothing wrong with this girl. I mean, really, yes, yeah, she was heavier, but my first thought was, is she doesn't have a weight issue at all. I mean, even when she was heavier, yeah, she could have lost some weight. Technically she was overweight, but she has more of a mental issue on her self-value, her self-worth and what she's looking at and seeing than she does on weight itself. Weight is just a byproduct of what's going on, you know, in her head. And I think that's some of where a lot of people need to realize is, you know, you have to look at yourself of what you're actually worth, not necessarily what you physically look like. I mean, just because I'm fat doesn't mean I'm not totally freaking awesome. I mean, yeah, you right? can't, I, I have to have a fault somewhere. <laughs> right. I mean, this is, I, I have so much sexiness going on. I need, I need extra just so right. like, I mean, if, if this sexy and this charming and ripped, I mean, it, it'd be over. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It wouldn't be fair. Yeah, It wouldn't be fair to everyone else. I mean, like, I, I'm, I mean, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm chubby because I mean, yeah, if I was skinny and ripped, no guy would have a chance. I mean, I have to have a fault so everyone else can have a chance. <laughs> See, I'm I'm in that that boat with where that woman is, you know, like I uh in my head, man, I uh I beat myself up constantly like I'm not good enough. I'm not not there, not you know, like I, I brought up a little bit ago, like the I get mad at myself because I quit, you know, 7 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like where would I be? And to, to touch on what that, that lady said, uh, or her issue, like, oh, I'm, I'm big. And even when she wasn't real big, uh, for me, I think about, I would love to be the size I was when I thought I was fat X amount of years ago. Right. You know, like I, I think like two, 270, 260, I was like the biggest person in my high school, but man, I would, I would love to be there. Yep. Yeah. And I, I've seen kind of the similar thing as, you know, looking at pictures of me in my grade school, I was the fattest kid in any, any age group around me. I went to a small school and I look at those pictures now and it's like, I was just chubby. I wasn't fat, but to everybody around that age group in that time frame you know, obesity wasn't as big of an issue as it is now. So I definitely stuck out more, but I wasn't in that horrible of a shape when I started going down this path. And, you know, everybody else I realized was making up my mind for me that I was fat. Well, if I'm already fat, then I might as well have another piece of pizza because it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that kind of sets things along the path where my kids... I need to make sure they know that their value isn't in their physical looks, but they're my kids. So they're all gorgeous anyways. But I mean, <laughs> but it's something where I think we get too caught up on that. And that's where we need to have our mind set on what we are or where we're going versus, you know, what other people are saying, what their mind is. Yeah. Is your wife flirting with you on the side there, Luke? Well, she she stuck her hand through my my green screen trying to see see it on there. <laughs> <laughs> She's a goofball. I gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. Yep. Yeah. For for me, like the, I like to think that I have my head in it and I'm I'm 
ready to grind and you know i've got i've got i'm on track but um i'm, I'm going to release an episode for my podcast on monday that explains how messed up i actually am right now you know it's it's titled um what's wrong with me you know and like looking at it i'm i'm nowhere near where i i would love to be where i sometimes see myself to be um so i, I would love to to be able to get my head on a little bit tighter you know yeah but if if, if if you if you're envisioning your your future self right if in your head if you think you're already there that you're thinner than you are right now it's that's not a bad thing. I mean, when you look at yourself and see the, the, the bigger version of yourself, you're like, okay, I've got goals now. I want to work towards that. Where I, where I struggle sometimes is I look in the mirror and I see myself, you know, 80, 90 pounds ago, right? That, that's who I see in the mirror still. And that's, for me, it gets in my head. That, make, that makes me get up at 4 a.m. every morning and go out there and grind just because that's just, I mean, like I'm, it's not like I am. I, I'm, I think there's me a little bit. Uh, yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. internet, man. And, um, you know, and I think mentally, a lot of times, I know when I look at myself, even, you know, and try to be in a critiquing way, I'm now to the mindset to where even though I may be 100 pounds heavier, than person X starting their journey or wanting to lose weight, I'm in a better spot than most people are. And for me to explain that to someone is, is even though I'm heavier right now, even though I'm, I have some physical limitations on being able to exercise and stuff like that because of my weight, I have the knowledge, I have the drive, and I have the goal already made up that I don't care if you're starting hundred pounds lighter than me right now. If you wanted to have a weight loss competition, you're going to lose. I mean, that's just <laughs> all there is to it is I've already got my success set up. And I think that's where a lot of people, you know, miss things and everything, not just weight loss or those goals of, no, this is what I'm going to do. And the world's going to succumb to my direction because I'm going to keep driving that way. Even if I hit a brick wall, I'm going through it, over it, around it, below it, whatever I got to do, I'm still getting to that other side because that's where I'm going. I'm already there. I just got this little block in my way. One person that's really good at, you know, having that right mindset and I'll, I'll give him a little shout out is uh, David Packer, the, the guy that we had on yep. here, you know, like, when we were interviewing him, every sentence he said, it's when, you know, when I get, when I'm here, it wasn't an if, it wasn't an if statement. It was when. Mm -hmm. So like, he's got it, he's got it down that it's, it's going to happen. There's no, there's no way around it. And I, well, I absolutely love that. Well, there's positive informations, right? Future speak, uh, positive self speak, all those things that you can do internally. I mean, I used to make fun of them when I was younger, right? Like the whole Stuart Smalley thing on SNL, like I'm good enough. I'm smart enough, right? I used to make fun of that, but it, it's the truth. Like if, if you tell yourself I'm doing this and when I do this and when I do this and, and you keep repeating it and you look yourself in the mirror every morning when you get up and you say, hey, today's my day. This is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it. It works. I mean, trust me. I mean, that's what I did. That's one of the things I, I used to be embarrassed to share. It's like, I, before I go to bed, as I was brushing my teeth and when I get up the next morning, I tell myself like, look, you're going to kick ass today. You're going to do this today. And it's going to be a great day. And it was all about choosing your attitude every day. Every day you get up, you have a choice to make, right? You're blessed with this, this day. Use it wisely. Wake up every morning and say, I'm, I'm going to do X and then do it. And then for me, it was always getting out of the routine of making excuses, stop talking and just doing and that's why I, that's why I choose to do it first thing in the morning because I can't talk myself out of it. Right. Absolutely. And that future speak, you're a hundred percent right. There's nothing. I don't want to say there's nothing, but that's a very, very powerful tool to have to the point to where it works in every area of your life. Like my current job position is here because I created it. It's something I wanted to do six years ago 
So I created it. And a lot of people don't understand that because it's hard for people to understand, you know, that you can develop something for you, not only, you know, your own physical life, but your own livelihood, everything around it. It's, it's able to be created. If you aren't happy with what you're at, where you're at, you can change it. Now, a lot of people lose drive and don't have the perseverance to push through. They give up so quick and easy, you know, the first couple of hard obstacles, but it's all possible. Yeah. That one thing one those, I want to, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, by all means. Well, I was going to, I was going to touch on something that you said, um, Adam, with the, uh, one thing that I do every day, I look in the mirror and I, I tell myself two things that I love about myself. And my thought process on that is over the years, I've talked really bad about myself. I've always said, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm too fat or, you know, wh whatever the situation may be over the years, I start believing that. So my thought process on doing this every day, you know, whether it's, Oh, my beard looks good today, or, you know, my hair looks right. You know, um, I'm trying to, to reverse that to where I can actually see positive things with me. And, um, I, something you said in there just triggered that and made, made me think of that. So that's, uh, that's one thing that I do that, I mean, it, it makes a huge difference in my day because I, I, I see myself in a, a positive sense. Absolutely. And uh -oh. I think, uh, Oh, as a little man. I think uh, you're right, though. Mm -hmm. You have to find things that you agree with, with yourself or that you like or that you love. And even I think uh, physically, you know, not just mentally is, you know, a lot of people think that they're ugly or whatever. And, you know, there are there's always something that you want to change. But I think being able to focus on the things that you do like and enjoying yourself that way that sounds really weird but is a necessity it's one of those things where you know I remember you know one of the areas I like my traps I like you know being able to that's just something that's always intrigued me that you know I can see this and I don't have that image of everything else below because my focus is yeah. there <laughs> but it, it's something that you like hey little man Hi. How you doing? What's good. up, buddy? I'm good. Good deal. Good. Come on. <laughs> yeah, so um oh I lost my train of thought. You you said something in there in there that triggered it for me, but I, you, I think I you lost got, it. You got lost in the mountains known as Corey's traps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Brown Mountains. Something like that. You were going to say something, uh, Adam, before I interrupted you. Before That, that, that ship has passed, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, Whoops. no, it's, we, we've, had, we've had some serious uh, sibling rivalry with my kids, um, especially today. So it's been a good time. <laughs> testing testing the limits as a parent that's for sure um no i wish i wish i would, would remember what we were saying but now uh, we're talking about positive speak and you're talking yeah you, know, you shared about how you used to beat yourself up and i mean i think we've all been there man like i, I remember when, when i was at my biggest and i would literally be at a strip you know, strip center and i would drive in between each ones you know like from one end cap to the other end cap and instead of walking five minutes i'd drive and the same way it's like dude first off you can't walk that far you're too fat second off if you do walk that far you're gonna smell like shit because you're gonna be sweaty and stinky and you know and then you're gonna be worried about people and then i'd be worried about people smelling me right because i know i mean we all know that big people sweat and big people stink and you know yeah. if when you're bigger you're known for just stereotyping the, the you know poor hygiene and stuff like that and then and i it got to be a complex for me that i'd shower twice that i didn't have that fat guy funk right touching on that fat guy funk 
I had a situation today where I chose not to speak. <laughs> my, me and my daughter were uh, grocery shopping and because I ate all of her broccoli. So since I ate all the broccoli, I was going to take her grocery shopping and let her pick out her broccoli and whatever else healthy she wanted. And uh, I smelled this huge amount of cologne. And we aren't talking a little, like huge amount. And nobody else was in the aisle. And my daughter said something about me having too much cologne on. I'm like, that's not me. And we turned the corner and I totally stereotyped and skipped an aisle. I looked down and there's this heavier set couple, very heavy. And I knew right away the entire scene of what was going on with that gentleman and why there was such a huge amount of cologne. And we're talking, you could literally smell three, four aisles over of how much cologne, because I know the struggle for him was real that that shower didn't happen, you know, for whatever reason. And it's now a shower in a bottle kind of thing. And I wanted to kind of point that out to my daughter to have that realization of this is what happens when you get into this kind of shape. And I decided not to, but it's one of those that I could relate to that. And I knew what it was. And it's one of those things of like, I wonder if he realizes how many other people actually see through that now, not just, you know, this is my cover up. Yeah. And either he knows and he's in denial about it, or he just doesn't know. Right. And and I think that, that sometimes that that's always a fine line to walk. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are some things that I, I, I was super vigilant about, right. Showering twice a day, making sure I smelled right. And, and cause I had, I had that fear of being that guy. Right. And then um, other times, you know, there, there could have been times where I was that guy and I had no idea about it. Right. And just, right. you know, I say, I guess part of this, like, part of the journey is almost like, um, like not like a spiritual awakening, but the, the, I guess the, the fat guy version of that. I mean, we can call it the, the fat fuck awakening if you want to um, mm-hmm. put that on a t-shirt, Luke. Right. Yeah. The, t-shirts going. <laughs> uh, the fat funk awakening. I like it. Yeah. The well, fat funk awakening. I mean, that's just t- part of it. Talking though. about, uh, talking about the smell. Is it just me and the people that I know? Um, anytime somebody smells a fart, it's always the fat guy. They're always like, Oh, Luke farted. Uh, yeah like every every time i don't know if it's because i'm fat or i don't know <laughs> well no for me it was it was either me or my buddy matt who was like the he was a fat kid then he got super he got ripped in college and he's maintained his physique but he eats such high protein all the time like he eats a lot of protein bars protein shakes the dude the dude and i would actually would go toe-to-toe for farts i mean it was bad it was like real bad like when we're, we're like late 20s and i, I was big and this one time I told totally I got him went, he was thinking about Pumas. So we, were, we were in the Galleria, right? Super fancy mall, Puma store. Very, very, very attractive sales lady walks up, is helping him out. And I had one brewing and I literally, I, I let it rip. I let it rip. It, dude, it, it, remember in Scooby Doo when the green fog comes and it goes, ooh, it was like that. And it smelled bad. I, I let it rip and I, I, I walked. Right in front of him, and I walked out of the store. <laughs> it's then, terribly awesome. Yeah, dude, it was it was the best thing ever because like Matt's a good looking guy. He's, he's six, six two, six three. He's jacked. He's bald, and girls fall flock all over him. But I, I was so perfectly timed because I ripped it and I walked out. And then the sales girl <laughs> walked up, and then he just like turned and walked out and came outside. He's like, he's like, f you, f you. F you, dude. You're such an a hole. I hate you. And, and then we, then, and then we we're, we're in the middle of the, the galleria, crying, laughing. I was like, nah, yeah, you, you win some. You win some. You lose some. Oh, you lost something. Yeah. No, I. I that, we awesome. still talk about that, man. It's that's like, yeah, that's like, I mean, hell. That's like almost what 18 years ago, something like that, 15 years ago. So it it, it was uh yeah. yeah. It, it, it was bad but then again the same guy like we were rolling around and he'd like rip ass and then like lock the windows and turn the heater on oh so. oh he deserved it he so deserved oh, yeah. it oh, yeah we, i've known him since we were kids man but yeah i mean we, we've gone back and forth like that 
but yeah, getting back to it, whenever someone farts, it's generally the fat guy. And it's generally the fat guy because we eat like shit and we have all that saturated fat and greasiness going on. Might as well yeah. be us. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot that goes with that. And have you ever been in a situation where there's a broken piece of furniture in the house? And if mm-hmm. it is discovered while you're in that house, you did it. Oh. I don't care if you haven't even <laughs> sat down yet. You did it. There's just or, no, if, no ifs, ands, or buts so about it. One thing about me now. Hey. I think we're losing you again, Adam. Oh, oh. Man, I have a good point. Am I, am I there? Am I there? Yeah, you're there now. You're there, but you're going to have to start all over. But do it with the same okay. ambition. Go. All right. All right. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> um. One, one thing I, I started doing, and I'll tell you why, is I checked the weight limit on everything. I, well, because before I started doing that, I didn't realize that chairs, especially white plastic chairs or camping chairs, you need to talk to mom about that. Um, so like, you know, any white plastic chair, any plastic chair in general, any, you know, camping bag chair, they have weight limits. And I didn't know this because I was that guy that would break them. Like I'd be at a party or hanging out at a friend's house and I'd be in their, their backyard and then all of a sudden you hear snap and it'd be my ass falling on the ground. Uh, same thing with the, the camping chairs that you, know, you get from the sporting goods store. Luckily they're like five, 10 bucks, but like, but if you like go like down the aisle a little bit, you can get the big boy ones for 20 and then they're rated up to 500 pounds. So I just started buying those and I still buy them cause they're just way more comfortable, but right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I broke my wife got me one. Did she? And I noticed it was it was a hundred pounds less than what I weigh, and I didn't want to say anything to her. It was for Christmas a couple of years ago. Like, oh man, it was a nice one. Rocker, it was a rocker with hydraulics on it. To... Yeah, I have one of those now. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm pro- I, I probably I exceed the. Yeah, I probably exceed the weight limit on that, but I still rock the shit out of it. <laughs> I I don't sit on couches. You guys sit on it. You don't. No. <laughs> Absolutely well, not. Talking I, of, talking about breaking stuff. Yep. I'm you broken. you mentioned it's obviously it's always the fat guy. Uh huh. Um. If I find it before somebody else does, the whole time I'm like, oh man, they're gonna think I broke it. It's horrible. So like in my mind, I'm having this conversation. Like, I do I tell them that their things broke because they're obviously gonna think it was me. You know, if they, if they know they're going to think it was me and, oh man, that's a, a whole, whole battle inside my head. Yeah. So my question is, because if somebody's watching this right now, how do you go from that mindset of, you know, this chair is broken. I didn't break it. Everybody's going to think it's me to being on track with where you want to be with, with your goals and your weight loss. How do you focus that into a positive point. Yeah. Adam? Well, yeah, I think a lot of it, I mean, again, I, 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 you kind of have to bottle it all up and use that for motivation at, at the end of it, right? I think that in order to be successful, you have to be mentally ready. And we've talked about this before, but it, it's worth repeating. I mean, like we've all failed at this several times. Why is this time going to work, right? But for me, this time because I was ready. I was, I, you know, I hit my my all time low point, my rock bottom. I had to do it. I had to do it for me, my family, my kids. And and I guess the easiest way to do it is just to bottle all that up, and and have that for motivation and have that as a fear factor, right? Do you want to go back to that? No. Get up. Get off your ass. Go move. Go do something. You know, whether it's get on my bike or go swing my kettlebells or go take a walk around the block or do something or put down the cookies and pick up the, you know, the peanut butter and the graham cracker. If you want a little snack, you know, that's a little bit naughty or whatever you want to be. But that that for me is, is the driver. Right. So I've taken all that stuff and that's really is one of my big motivators. I mean, that com- combined with what we talked about earlier, the, the positive speak. It's a big motivator. I mean, I don't want to ever go back to that way I was. You know, I enjoy being able to say, hey, you know, it's only like a mile away. Let's go walk rather than like, hell no, I'm going to drive. So, yeah. So you're saying put it as uh, something to fuel the fire. 
Yeah. Yeah, man. Make a list. I, I would, if someone's listening right now and gets it, gets it being the fat guy, the, the stinky guy, the, the, the fat funk, write all that stuff down, make a list of all those, those insecurities or the, the anxiety thing, the things that trigger anxiety, right? Write them all down. It will be, you know, cathartic or therapeutic to write them down. It's, you know, a form of therapy and write it down. I mean, look at it. It's a realization and you can think about it. You can talk about it. Once you write it down, it, it becomes a reality for a lot of people that don't write it down or they just internalize it the whole time. So write that down and write that list down and put it on, put that list on your door, tape it to your door and look at it every day as, as a motivation or the same thing with like, if you have a, a number you want to hit, write that number, physically write that number down, hit the piece of paper and, and, and tape it to your, and tape, tape it to your fridge. Right? It's more going to look every day. Right. Cause I think I want to add with that is you're hundred percent right. And you have to know that that can't get you down. You know, you cannot compile the stuff and have that be a burden. It right. has to be a motivation. You, you have to realize that this is a reason why, not a reason because. You know, it's not a reason to, you know, to stop you. It's a reason why you're going to continue going. And I think yep. too many times get too, people get too sensitive on that situation and they look at it and they become overwhelmed with it. And they, you know, they all, all of a sudden get into this funk, this, you know, dark hole again is because they let it drag them back to that spot. They let that, you know, that, yeah. that funk or that broken chair or whatever, like you were saying, Luke, what do I do? What do I say? You know, it depends on the situation. Me being, you know, sometimes comedically inclined is I would grab it and I would run up to whoever's house it was and be like, you have another fat friend you didn't tell me about. You're only allowed to have one fat friend because who broke this chair? I didn't sit in it. Where's your other fat friend? You're only supposed to have one, you know, something like yeah. that. But that's, that's right. me because again, I would have that same thought process that they're going to think that I broke it. They're going to yeah. automatically blame me. I would automatically project that onto somebody else or something to try to throw it out there. And just so you know, when that has happened before they then said, Oh yeah, that is broke. I forgot to tell you not to sit in it. And then it's like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> you, you, you wanted me to sit in this side, so buy you a new one. Um, right. But, but Corey, the, the, before you, you got into that very funny anecdote, you're going down a path about, the list and, and the anxiety that people feel. And I think a lot of times people feel trapped in their own bodies, like they're a prisoner in their own body. Like they can't fix this, right? Like they're to a point where it's like, yeah, you know what? Like this, you said earlier, like everyone thought you were fat when you were chubby, right? When you were a kid, well, I'm, I always had the extra pizza, right? It's a self-defeating prophecy where people get in this mindset and it's a very negative one that they are prisoners in their own body and this is not fixable, but it is. I mean, it all depends on the means you go to do it and how hard you're willing to work for it. I mean, I think everyone should strive to do this naturally first, but if it's a um, end all be all health condition, then there's always the surgeries and stuff like that. But I mean, it is fixable. You, that, that was one thing for me. Like when I finally broke down and saw my um, non-surgical weight loss, obesity doctor, she had all these people lined up for me to talk to. I'm like, no, I, I have to figure this out on my own or else it won't stick right? It's, I have to do this. Let me do it. Let me research it. Let me do it my way. Give me three months. And if I fail, I'll talk to every single one of your persons. I don't, I don't die to or, or a therapist or whatever line all up, but, but I didn't fail because I put that commitment to myself that I was going to do it for myself first, but also for my family, you know, for my wife, for my kids. But I mean, that's just, I, I guess the take home is, is, is if you're feeling down, if you're feeling trapped, you're not, you just need to, you, you realize there is light in the tunnel and you, and it's, it didn't, we see, we said this before time and time again, you didn't get fat overnight. You took you 10, 20, 30 years to get to this point. Luckily it takes a fraction of that time to reverse that. So it's like focus on the positive, focus on taking that first step today, taking two steps tomorrow focus on how you're going to get better every single day. And then before you know it, it's a snowball 
going downhill. It's going to gain momentum, gain size, and then you're going to lose size. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to touch on something with that is I mentally have to come to a point to where I enjoy the process. Yep. You know, when uh, I know that when I switched to being completely plant-based, one of my concerns was is I, I, I'm in a farming community. I'm in a, you know, a meat eater and I've always been a huge meat eater is what would people think? What would people think? And, you know, realistically, and I just had this discussion the other day, I'm going to go off in two different directions here. So I just had this discussion the other day as a guy always gave me wild caught salmon. He'd go up north somewhere, catch salmon, he cans it. Absolutely wonderful tasting. I mean, just beautiful. And he, he asked me if I wanted some. I said, nope, I'm, you know, I'm plant-based. I'm not eating any meat. It's like, well, fish doesn't count for that, does it? I was like, everything that has the chance to deter my health and shorten my lifespan with my kids matters now. That's where I'm at. And the discussion was over. I mean, that's, that's what it was. And I agree with that. So the other direction where I was going is what I start with. Uh, totally lost the it now. The farming community. No, before that. You're going to go two directions. Right before that. There's another direction there. <laughs> the process you got to enjoy the process <laughs> yes so what i was getting at is there's certain feelings that i get from the food that i'm eating now that i focus on i focus on how that makes me feel and i try to put that in an enjoyable situation so i practice certain breathing practices um that slow deep five eight seconds in hold it for four seconds five seconds out or whatever. It's a relaxation technique. But when I find these things, I try to focus as much mentally and physically to get to an euphoric, relaxing, happy state when I'm experiencing that. Um, also with the fasting, it, it took me a little bit, but you know, that window for a long time, that eight o'clock window hit and I was starving. I was just, you know, from eight or nine to 10 that there was a window there that I was starving. I would take that time to try to focus and recenter and actually enjoy that, figuring on what I enjoyed because of that. And then now I look forward to being hungry. I know that sounds weird. That sounds no. odd, but that, that's one of the things I enjoy, you know, having a plate full of broccoli because it's something I enjoy now. Yeah. So for me, the, the, the learning to, to, embrace the hunger feelings what was was crucial as well right so if you look at again if you look at our our history as as homo sapiens right we were cavemen we were hunter gatherers you know we we evolved to be these creatures that would get up and go on the hunt all day right and then you might eat a little bit here and there along the way if you're lucky and you got a kill you'll have a big meal that night and you'll feast and then and then and start the process over again the next day. So for me, doing the research just on like how our diets have changed over time and coming upon that that kind of mindset, right? That to embrace the hunger, to learn to love, be hunger hungry, and then intermittent fasting that, that was huge for me. And and realizing that you know our bodies aren't really meant to feel full and feel satiated all the time. And when you are hungry, especially for me, it was. I'd fast uh, from like seven at night until 11 the next day. And it'd be like at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. I mean, those hours I'd be at like intensely sharp with everything. Like it was like my, the peak of my hunger. It felt like, and I was just on it all every day at work. I mean, I was, I was laser focused, super sharp, tons of energy. And I guess it was like my primal instincts like that. That's when I should be going on, on the hunt and, and going on the kill. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yep. And here the past few weeks, my work's gotten really, really busy and it does every spring. And I, my meal time in the evening has been getting pushed back. You know, I, I like to be done eating by six o'clock. That's the, the habit I got into. That's, you know, where things were at. And here lately, I'm lucky to be done by like seven o'clock or a little after. And I really, really, really dislike going to bed, not hungry. <laughs> there's something to that. Um, 
has anybody ever ate a lot and then went and done any kind of exercise event and how they feel after that? Hey, you throw up. Right. I like to go to bed hungry and ready for any kind of activity. It makes things a lot more enjoyable. And that's why you have four kids. <laughs> but but I, no, I had I, to, man. I, I had to. Yep. But I sleep better. I, you know, there's well, something yeah. about it. But yeah, you're exactly right. That's why. Well, well, no, no, it, it's a good point because. Right, right. Brown to brown cow. <laughs> um, but no, that's just true because on my path to getting big, I would I would overeat to the point where, again, I, I mean, we've said this before, you know, the meal's not over until I hate myself, right? You know, it'd be one of those things where I would only eat and eat and eat and I'd continue to eat because it tasted good, not because I was hungry at all. And then I come home and I'd be like, I'd be, I'd be sweaty, right? I'd have the meat sweats. I'd come home and I'd, I'd, I'd peel off my clothes and just get it in a comfy t-shirt and a pair of gym shorts and just like lounge on the couch and then like roll my fat ass to bed. And then same thing, you, you sleep like crap, you don't sleep well at all. And then the next morning you're lethargic and you don't want to do anything then either. I mean, it's actually for, for me now with the kids, I, we try to eat dinner at six o'clock every night, right? It's just the, it's great because we can eat dinner and then have a little downtime and then it's time for everyone to go to bed. And then if we have energy, we can still stay up and, and, and hang out, but it gives me enough time to eat and then digest enough where I'm not going to bed feeling full. And I, so I would agree with, with um, Corey's hunger and, and ready for action. <laughs> for, for me, one thing I've noticed is the, the positive mindset, right? So I'm going to go back a little bit on being the fat guy and the, the, the stank and, and all that. Yeah. Um, I know I'm trying to lose weight. Everybody I see on the street, on the street, I still look like a fat guy, right? I'm still that, you know, there it's another big guy. Right. But how I, I always project my thoughts to people. That's one of my big issues is like this person thinks I'm disgusting or if I got a stain on my shirt, I must be a slob or whatever the case may be. Um, now that I have been trying to lose weight and I've been eating better and exercising, I don't, I don't have those thoughts nearly yep. as much. They, they happen, but it's not like, I'm just in a positive mood and that just keeps me going because like I said, I know I'm, I'm trying to lose the weight. They don't know, but something about it, like no. every, every pound I lose just pushes me. Well, you post you posted that picture the other day of your weight loss so far, man, and it's 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 phenomenal. I mean, you it's 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 huge, but that's just it. I mean, you you're on the right path. Your you mentally has changed from negative to positive, and even since I've known you, is yeah. you're you're more positive, you're more confident, you're more outgoing, you're more open to talk about these kind of things. And again, it's therapy for all of us, but. When I was in that same same thing, in that same point in the journey, it was it was fantastic. Like I felt ten feet tall and bulletproof. I, mean, yeah. I knew I was I knew I was gonna have failures along the way, but I knew how to overcome them. And I was I was just I felt like I was in the, the driver's seat for the first time in my entire life. And yeah, like yeah. looking back looking back on it, when you were fifty or sixty pounds heavier, you were a fat guy, but now you're just a big guy, right? And then, but you're carrying yourself with more confidence because before you're fat and beating yourself up about it. Now you're like, I'm not a skinny fat, but it's like, I'm fixed fat, right? I'm a fixed chubby, however you want to call it. Yeah. But, but you're, you're a hundred percent positive. You're positive. You're confident. And you're, you're truly marching to the beat of your own drum. So when you walk around, you're like, dude, I'm badass. I've done this. I'm doing all these things. It makes me feel good. Working out makes me feel good. I know that sometimes I'm still going to binge and that's going to make me feel like shit, but I know that I can now talk about that. I know how to overcome that. And luckily the binging is losing its, its, its lacklusterness, right? It's, it doesn't feel like it felt, it doesn't hit the same. And yeah, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's exactly how I explain it is that, yeah. that binge doesn't hit like, no. like it used to. I, I listen to Luke. I listen. I missed it, I guess. I'm sorry. sorry. So where are you at, Luke? I'm... Um, well, I, I yesterday when I did my or 
Friday when I did my weigh in, I was 361, I think. And so the past couple of weeks I've been in the same area. I haven't been losing. I haven't like, I, I'm going up and down, up and down. And, um, one fifty or three fifty eight to three sixty two is the range that I've been in. So it's, it's been driving me crazy. Um, I, I think of the positive and the negative, you know, like I could be counting my calories better. I could be eating cleaner. Um, but I have been going to the gym more. And I started doing like creatine, which, you know, you'll gain a little water weight in the beginning from it. So, um, I try to, I try to look at both ends of the spectrum instead of before it game over. I, you know, I'm, I'm gaining weight, might as well quit. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I'll tell you what, um, when I get to that point, I had a couple of plateaus that were a solid month long man, like three to four weeks. And what I would do is I'd look, um, I'd look back on my diet and like, what, what, what do I have been doing? What I haven't been doing. And I was using my fitness pal. It's like, when was the last time I really logged my weight here and made tweaks to my goals and my, my caloric intake and how yeah. what I need to stay under. And that's what helped me that, and just reaching out to some other friends that were going through it. And you just got to keep pressing on with, especially with the plateaus. I mean, they're going to, they're going to happen. Yeah, they, they suck. suck. <laughs> they suck so hard, man. And, and just because you, you're doing everything right. And, and again, like you said, I mean, this is the point where before you 100% quit because that's where I was. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, th- I can't quit. I got to keep on. And I got and then then finally one day you weigh yourself, just like Corey, you said, it's all of a sudden that the scale drops like eight pounds overnight. You're like, whoa, right. man. Like, like <laughs> I, I, I've been like constipated and the scale just still moved eight pounds. What the hell just happened? But then all of a sudden you're like, well, shit, I'm gonna go like twice as hard today and just keep going harder and harder and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I was, well, since vacation and we ate good on vacation and I walked a lot more. And at some point in time, I'll get into uh, how I don't lose weight when I exercise. That's going to be a, a topic or we may get into that here pretty soon, but my weight was kind of staying, you know, the same. And then in the past two days, I lost nine pounds. Didn't change anything, nothing, just kind of stood floating around the same area for four or five days or whatever. And then boom, it's just like, where'd that come from? But I didn't (laughs) do anything different. I mean, so it's interesting how I think when you watch your weight long enough, consistently enough, you get educated and realize that just because you're stuck somewhere, whether it be three days, a week, two weeks, doesn't mean anything as far as your long-term goal because when you look at it in a month period or in a two-month period or a quarterly period all of a sudden if you're keeping it on a scale that scale still keeps the same similar tilt I mean obviously when you start losing weight that that drop off is a little faster but when your body gets accustomed to the way you're eating and gets into the habit of things that that downward curve you know, for most people, it's about the same. I mean, it's, it's hard to consistently lose more than three, three and a half pounds a week. I mean, that's, that's just the fact of it. If you're losing more than that, maybe you need to, but maybe you're being a little too drastic or, you know, something like that. But if you look at an overall thing, even if you only, you know, you stay, you plateau for a month, but you look at the whole three month window or six month window, you realize, Oh no, I, I was, my body's still going there. It just kind of stair steps yeah. as it goes. Well, that's just it. I mean, you look at all that stuff. It's like, uh, you know, here's, you know, my start and, and my goal and you want it to be a straight path, right. From your start to your goal. But really it's like all these squigglies and all this crazy shit happens along <laughs> yes. the way that that's real life. Right. I mean, you want it to be consistent and, and, and end over end and it, it it's not how it works. It just, it's not in, and then Corey, to your point too, it's like, yeah, it's your body, your body is constantly adapting and changing. And over time, you know, sometimes your body's like trying to self-regulate. So it's like holding on to everything. So it's almost like in a starvation mode. It's like, whoa, man, I kind of like being right here. Let's not, let's not push it. Let's not push it. But then they realize like, oh, this dude's really consistent. Okay. Let's, let's let that fat go. And then it's dropping another five or 10 or eight pounds, whatever it is. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it takes that, but you know, I do find it interesting that when I'm exercising more, I don't lose weight right away. I actually hold on or gain 
and I know exactly why, but it, it's really interesting where I know a lot of people when they want to start off, they want to focus on exercise versus nutrition. Yep. And I used to have a, a thing up at work when I was working at the gym that had basically uh, a graph of four boxes. So four meals a day, basically. You have three main meals and a snack. So if you're eating four times a day or you have that that you can control, great. An elite athlete has a hard time working out seven days a week consistently. So the way that I would put it to most people is you can work out if you're an elite athlete, let's say maybe seven days a week, but you're going to eventually fail at that. That's just not possible. Yep. An average person starting to work out, you're doing good if you consistently can work, can consistently work out three, four, maybe five times a week. You know, that that's, that's pretty decent. So you have, let's say you're working out seven days a week. You have seven opportunities a week to work hard enough to lose weight. Or you have, if you take four times seven, which hard math for me, like 28. 28. So <laughs> now you have 28 opportunities in a week to adjust your weight loss versus seven. Your okay. nutrition, you have a lot more ability to control and a lot more opportunities than you can with exercise. Right. 100%. And then it's, I hate the adage that the six packs are made in the kitchen, but it's, it's the truth, right? I mean, there's been a lot of, um, in the different circles I've been in, in the, in the men's group too, there's been a lot of new people joining. I guess it's springtime, people want to lose weight. And th that's the question. It's like, where do I start? I, you know, the gyms are closed because of the pandemic. It's like, first off, you don't need a gym. Right. You, you need, you, you you need to you need to go walk thirty minutes today or fifteen minutes today, mm -hmm. but con concentrate on 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 your calories in, calories out, and the quality of calories you're eating. And I know we've talked about this before too on, on on this wonderful podcast. But it is it's about the quality of calories and and what the foods are going to do for you and stuff like that. And and that's that's one thing that I always tell everyone. It's like really take a long hard look at what you're shoveling into your mouth and is it good. Is it healthy? Not good as in taste good. Is it good for you? Is it healthy for you? Is it because that, that was my biggest realization when I started when I first started checking calories is things I thought were healthy were so far from healthy. It was it. Yeah. I I literally there had some jaw dropping moments. I was like, holy shit! I've been like, really, really, that that's supposed to be healthy, but it wasn't. Um, and, and that's just it. I mean, people need to realize that it's it's not that hard. You don't have to have all the gear to go to the gym. You just need to get up and move and focus on good foods and focus on, on the diet. And like you said, it's, it's easier and there's more opportunities to do it, especially if you have a family or you're a working professional or you just don't want to do it. <laughs> but there's more opportunities. to, And that's the thing, too. Like people think that you, you have to work out one, in one solid block of time and you don't. You can easily like walk in the morning, walk at lunch, walk at night or do like, okay, every hour in the hour, I'm going to do 10 air squats or a push up or something, right? Uh -huh. Something is better than nothing. Absolutely. I, Just, go on, Luke. I love, the, I love the, the picture of the iceberg. I don't know if you guys have seen oh, yeah. Yeah. talking about, you know, like the 10% that's above water is your diet or is your exercise. And then the 90% of the iceberg that you can't see is all diet. So I, I love that explanation of it. And it, it really shows you what it's like. Um, we do have a comment in the, the chat. I don't know. Uh, I think that's a, that's a Corey question right there. I know you with your exercises and stuff. Okay. I, I, my comment thing closed on me. So what, what's the question there, Luke? So it says, if you are in pain or you can't exercise, I have a hard time even walking across the hall to the bathroom. So, um, I don't know if, if the question is like, what, what kind of exercises you could do, um, when you, when you're, it's hard to be mobile. Yeah, absolutely. There's a whole lot of things that you can do. Um, a lot of times, um, I usually tell most people who are immobile is one, let's start on your breathing. 
And so many people just automatically forget this or don't realize the foundation of breathing. And it goes back to that, taking a deep breath in, holding it for a little bit and exhaling slowly. You know, that sounds weird. It's a relaxation technique for most people or that's how it's generally taught. But what that does is that's packing and extracting a lot of the oxygen out of what you're taking in. It's training that body. Will you guys please stop shaking my camera? <laughs> but it's, it's training Dead your voice. body to be able to get the most out of that. So when you do that, that also starts preparing you physically to be able to move. So from that point, if you are immobile, to where you can't walk, but you can still sit up in bed. Um, I touch on the uh, resistance bands a whole ton. Um, the biggest muscles that are needed to work on when you're overweight is your back and your butt and your legs. Those are your biggest muscles. They're also the ones that as we become overweight, a lot of people say, oh, my legs are huge. My legs are huge. Your calves are huge. Your thighs look big. Your glutes look big, but what's the muscle tone underneath? Because a lot of times the bigger we get, the more point on point that we start walking, the more we start relying on our skeletal structure to hold that. So we start working on those muscle groups where if you're sitting on the edge of a bed, grab a resistance strap, put it underneath the middle of your foot or right below the ball of your foot. So this is my foot. This is your arch here. If you can get that band right there and you literally do squats um, if you lean back to like one o'clock while you do that one that's going to engage your core two you're working one leg at a time so as it engages your core it's not only going to engage uh, laterally but also transversely so it'll you know get that off balance structure so you get more going there plus the other and then when you get that uh leg extended, you can actually start doing a lat pull with that. So you get like three exercises in one that covers half of the body where you're at. Um, great little exercises like that are fantastic to do. Um, I need to get more videos up of those. I really do because it's a question we get all the time. So the first thing that popped in my head, there was an old series when we were kids called Sit and Be Fit. And it was aimed, okay. it, was aim, it was aimed to more of the senior citizen crowd, but there was like a woman that was there that was just it's all exercise you can do sitting in your chair. I'm, I, I can't remember any of them, but, but it was just little things you could do to move around and stretch out and stuff like that, because that's just it. I mean, if, if you can't move or it hurts too bad, it hurts so bad that you, you can't move. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I know my, my biggest fear and it was, especially when I was larger and flying a lot was like blood clots and, and, and not having enough movement to do that or get cramped up. So whenever I, whenever I, and I still do whenever I fly, I do a, a lot of like, uh, like, like closed quarters, like leg stretches, like contract and, and release my muscles and stuff like that to give them a little bit of uh, exercise when I'm, when I'm flying, especially when I have to go to New York for work because it's a four hour flight. It's not fun. Right. So right. it's like little bits here and there. Um, but I'm going to sit and do fits. Well, guys, I, I hate to do this, but I do need to leave um, as, with my son coming in earlier and I hear all kinds of ruckus in the background. I need to go be dad. <laughs> um, thank you both for this. Um, it's been a rough couple of weeks. And I needed this, but we'll do more episodes soon. Um, thank everyone for listening and uh, we'll keep going. All Thanks right. Guys. We'll see you later, Adam. I'm going to touch back with Cynthia here a little bit yeah. in the podcast and I'm going to message do. her. Uh, anyways, uh, Cynthia, another thing that to focus right. on other than the exercise, Appreciate take care, Adam. Nice seeing you is uh, a lot of times we're, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen in previous episodes, we're always joint on joint. Getting the muscles in shape to be able to handle the weight um, is the biggest thing. If you can stand with your heels off of the ground and back up against the wall, um, so your back's against the wall and you have the weight, your weight on the ball of your foot with your heel off, it transfers all that weight to your calf muscle. From there, if your knee has a slight bend to it, and I'm not talking a 90 degree bend or anything like that, I'm talking just a slight bend. That transfers that weight from that calf muscle to your quads, to your quads directly to your glutes, and you're leaning against the wall for support. Just standing like that for 
20 seconds at a time, if you can, 10 seconds, it doesn't matter how long, but if you can stand like that, now you're starting to train those muscles to be able to start handling the weight that you're currently carrying without it putting on your joints. Most of the time when we become to a certain degree of obese is we start putting our joints in a position to where they're directly on point on point to hold the weight, to be able to withstand it. That's our body's natural overload capacity. So if we're, you know, having to pack something for a very short time, once in a while, that's how we are able to hold that weight is we start relying on it skeletally. We need to transfer that back to muscular on being able to handle that weight. So it'll take a process, but it is something that we definitely want to do. And I think I just lost loop too. Holy smokes. I'm, I'm here. You can hear me. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. So it's a one man show right now. So that's, <laughs> that's a couple of things that you can work on and stuff uh, to start there. Um, and yeah, I need to start doing that. There are other things out there. If you go to a gym, make sure they have a rowing machine. Something like a rowing machine is a good exercise to be able to do. Um, they're, you know, very low impact, but incorporate a lot of body to it. Uh, when you're when you're as big as what I was, ellipticals are even a challenge. Um, bicycles are a no-go um, because a lot of times they aren't able to hold my belly as well, or my butt seems to swallow things that it ain't supposed to. So we'll leave it at that. Didn't you but, do a video on, on this? Yeah. Yeah. Topic? I did a video on this topic um, as well as I have one. We'll that, link that in the. Yeah. And I have one. For sure. I think I have hidden on the channel because you can see my belly hanging out and, you know, that subconscious thing of that. But totally. it's a video that I need to totally do more of because there's a lot of stuff that we can work on that will help people on those first steps and start feeling better because the biggest thing with mobility is you have to you have to feel the results you have to see it you have to be without pain because any trainer or any physical therapist will stop you or if there were any good will stop you at pain they don't want you at pain yeah. It's just that concept of a lot of times people don't understand being that heavy, how to work around some of the pains, because when you become obese and have been for a long time, that knee pain or that hip pain, ankle pain, shoulder pains, oh, those are yeah. serious, serious pains that, you know, these are major mobility joints that are used in so many functions. How do you work the lower extremities without hurting the knee that is in pain yeah. all the time it's it's a challenge it really is and what works for one person won't work for the other because that damage can be done multiple different ways there's you know it's a joint that's only necessarily intended to work one direction but over time with enough damage it can start working other directions and knowing where that's failing at i think i lost too you lost me really How'd you lose me? I still oh, it's my on. internet. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm flipping you off just for that. Anyways, knowing which way that that is going and stuff depends on how you start correcting that with certain exercises and stuff. So it, it does have to be somewhat tailored to you, but it is something that me and David Packard actually talked about a little bit wanting to do, you know, training sessions for people, I thought about trying to do Zoom training sessions, showing the exercises and something to follow along with. If that's something that you would like to participate in, let me know. And that's probably oh, yeah, enough that's, talking that's, on my spot. Well, that that's awesome. You know, like we've talked about it before. I don't know if we've talked about it on recording, but um, you know, us us bigger, we don't move like the average personal trainer who's trained to, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. When, when you're trained in fitness, like this is your, your structure, this is, you need to do it like this. Well, somebody that's got three, 400 extra pounds on them can't move like that person. Who's a, you know, 125, 130 pounds. Right. Not only that on a physical trainer aspect um, is most of your curriculum goes with certain alignments and stuff and being able to see that alignment 
Well, the problem is, is when you're so big, you know, you take a skinny person, you scan them sideways. It's really easy to see where that shoulder joint is and to see if that lines up with the hip joint, to see if that lines up with, you know, your knee. You can see those imbalances so much easier. When you're extremely overweight and you look at somebody's back, can you, you can't really always tell if their spine is aligned right or are they just right. holding more weight on the right side? You know, it, it's one of those things you can't see that. So it's definitely a challenge that you work around and you have to rely more on the movement that is possible and what is not possible and the feedback from your body. You, you have to be able to verbally relay that to, you know, a trainer for them to actually tell. They have to actually put you in the position, well, can you turn 30 degrees this way and 30 degrees this way? Because if you go to an actual physical therapist, that's one of the first things they do is they check your mobility. They right. see how much movement you have, then they see how much force or how much resistance you can handle in those situations, you know, you go in with a damaged shoulder or whatever, well, does it move this way? Oh, it hurts there. Okay. Then they mark that down. Now push against my hand, pull against my hand. That's what they're doing is they're assessing that. That level of assessment is what needs done with somebody who is obese. So a lot of times people say, oh, I signed up for a personal trainer. You should have signed up with a physical therapist. That, that's who you should have signed up for not necessarily a personal trainer. A personal trainer can have excellent intentions and they can be excellent at their job, but their job isn't necessarily at your level because a lot of times we have a lot of structural imbalances of things that need fixing before we can start focusing on training for weight loss. We need to train for mobility. That's why the training that I do is a spatial mobility training. It's, you know, getting my body moving through space and increasing the mobility of it versus I want to go get strong or I want to burn calories. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. And that's where a lot of times I don't exercise for weight loss. It's not in my mindset. It's not in my, you know, thought process. I exercise to become better physically and mentally in how my body's moving because with that, side effect is, is I move more. The side effect of moving more is, yeah, there's a possibility weight loss is coming there. But if I, if my only focus is weight loss and I don't get that from exercising, all of a sudden I've lost the ambition to exercise. But if my focus yeah. is, I want to move smoother. I want to move better. I want to move like Conor McGregor, you know, <laughs> something like that, then that's, <laughs> you know, that's achievable. That's something that you can be like, I, you know, like Muhammad Ali used to say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. It's about movement. Your body's yeah. made to be able to move. That should be your focus, not whether I can bench press 800 pounds, which I don't think anybody can. But still, it, you know, those goals don't necessarily do a lot for the average person's goals in better health. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So okay. well, I did an episode for my podcast uh, on obese, you know, exercises for obese people. Um, we'll link that into the YouTube. So uh, Cynthia, if you're still with us here, um, we'll, we'll link Corey's videos and that uh, episode I did in, in the description of the YouTube. So you'd be able to find it. Absolutely. And I, I think that that's definitely a, a great idea. We should uh, do a whole episode on, on this topic alone because we could talk so much on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, and I think when you start talking about physical movement, even people who are in weightlifting or in any of these activities, you, I don't know if you've noticed a change in like our football players professional football players and stuff. If you look at a professional football player now versus 15, 20 years ago, you know, when I was a kid, there was a guy who played on Chicago bears, refrigerator, Perry, big guy, heavy guy. And he was a star player because of his size. Now, if you take that same position and you look at these guys today, they're a hundred pounds lighter. They're more powerful. They're faster. They're, 
because they've taken away from, hey, let's just be strong. Now let's make sure we have explosive movement. Let's make sure yeah. we have mobility in there and things like that. So it's one of those things where I don't really care where you're at physically, where you think you're at, you can probably improve. And when I speak of things of like, you know, Connor McGregor, is he focuses on movement. If you watch some of his training, he goes a lot with that animalistic movements and things like that. Or if you watch the guys who do parkour, watch how they flow, watch how they move. This is something. Yeah. That's something the human body's capable of. We're able to move that way. Now, if your goal is to be able to move that way when you're fat, guess what? You have a very long-term goal that you can gradually keep getting better and better and better at. And when you try to move that way, your body is going to want to get rid of resistance that's holding it up. So if you have a big old belly in front of you or you have a big old caboose out back and you keep pushing and keep trying to move these ways and keep developing that, your body wants to get rid of this stuff so it can move like that. It's, you know, getting that efficiency and that full thorough aspect of it versus I want the big bicep. Good. What's it going to do for you? Right. (laughs) It's one of the smallest muscles in your body. So it's going to consume less calories as it grows. It's going to take less calories to sustain while it stays big, but it's good in pictures. (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly you know it, it, I, you, well, I don't know what it was but something something you said in there you know triggered this thought um when i was younger i would climb trees and i you know i'd climb up on ladders and get on roofs and whatever um now as a big person i don't even want to step up on like a, a step ladder because i'm terrified even a even a fall like that, I'm gonna damage something. Like right. I, I'm gonna mess something up. I, I don't know if I talked about it here or not. Um, I didn't go to the gym for a week because I was goofing off and standing on my head and I was like, Whoa, I can do this. But uh-huh. like for a week afterwards, I could I could barely move. I was in so much pain. Uh yeah. So I uh well I, I say I could, you know, so much pain. Like I, I think I could have went to the gym. I was using it as an excuse, but um yeah little little things like that i cannot wait to be able to do things like i think it was the parkour you brought up like if i tried that it'd be game over for me but uh i would love to be able to move like that that's a great idea that's a that's a great thought process to um have that as a goal and not you know 170 pounds loss or whatever i would i would love to be able to to move like those guys Right. Because I mean, it's, it's amazing how capable we are. And as long as we're focused on what is an actual achievable goal and one that you can continually get to and continually see tangible improvements makes a huge difference and, and being overweight. And like Cynthia said, you know, in her comment, it's struggled to get to, you know, the next room over or two rooms over or whatever it is. When you, are actually able to do that and realize it didn't hurt. Yeah. That's an achievable, you know, that's something that most people don't realize is a huge milestone. I was able to walk up my one story flight of stairs without taking a break. That seems like, yeah. you know, minuscule things to the average person, but having, you know, mobility goals or mindset is a big thing. It's something where I think a lot of people will you know, lose out on and they focus only on exercise for weight loss. But realistically, some people don't lose weight when they exercise. Their body just doesn't give up weight just because you exercise. My body, I can tell you right now, if I exercise for an hour or go on a two mile hike with a 30 pound camera bag, unconsciously, I will be hungrier and I will consume more calories, even good food, doesn't matter what it is. I will make sure somehow I am consuming more to maintain or to make up for the exercise I did. It's just how I work. I know it's how I work. I know it's how a lot of people work though, is the more physical exertion you do, your body is designed to make sure that it sustains itself. And if it realizes, man, 
I worked hard today. All of a sudden, a lot of people have this little thing in their head. I deserve one more piece of whatever. I deserve, a, I deserve seconds today because I did this. A lot of people think that that's their, you know, uh, eating disorder or whatever. It's kind of, I mean, you could be, but some of it's just your body wants to sustain. Your body wants to make sure that, hey, I have this amount of weight, so I'm good for, you know, a famine. I'm good for, you know, a bad, th- a bad thing. And having a little bit more right now is needed for me to keep that weight. So there's a subconscious, you know, historical reason of why we eat a little bit more, why we automatically want a little seconds. We want to compensate for that. So anyways, I always get off into the same kind of tangents, it seems <laughs> like, but. No, it, it's good. I, uh, like, like I said, we're, we're all over the place uh, from what our original topic idea was, but that just goes to show like we could do so much. We, all these, all these things that we've talked about, we could talk for so much longer on just one of them, you know? Um, right. M- my internet is starting to act pretty nasty. All right. Um, so I'm, I think uh, we can uh, cut her here. Yeah. And like I, I think, said, whoops, just throw everything around. I'll just talk for a little bit while you just make a disaster over there. Everybody ignore him, focus right here. Anyways, yeah. And I think having, you know, the mindset is necessary and knowing how to set the goals or how to set things mentally, you know, whether it's, you know, your final weight loss goal or whether it's an exercise or movement goal or knowing where you want to be at is a necessity to be able to continually go. You have to be driven and you have to be, you know, convinced that this is what you're doing. It's not, what can I do? As David Packer would famously say, when I am here, yeah, this, this is what's going to happen. When I make this point, I got my next step available. Definitely. Luke, anything yeah. more or you want to just throw something off the table? Oh, <laughs> all right. Just start smacking shit. No, I, uh, there, like I, I've said it multiple times, like there's so much of this that we can continue to talk on. It's, it's insane. Um, just, yeah. A reminder, the, those links will be in the, the description. And um, I believe, I believe David's got some links or some videos on this as well. Doesn't he? I think so. And we can link his uh, YouTube channel in the bottom because he's a joy to watch. He really is. Yeah, definitely. And such a positive guy. And I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I tell him all the time that, you know, I, I would like to do more projects with him. He's busy, but it's like, man, he's just, every time I talk to him or anything, I'm smiling. <laughs> you know, it's, he's one of those. I, I really like that, that idea of doing the, the exercise videos. I think, yeah. uh, I think a lot of people could benefit from that and I, I recommend it and I'll, I'll join in just to, to do some exercise with you guys. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit afterwards and we'll just plan it and see how we can video it to where people can actually see and notice, you know, worthwhile. Right. I, that's yeah. my biggest thing is I know it'd be nice to have two or three camera angles, but to do it live, you know, do we have somebody running the camera and, you know, focusing on the movements or is it just, sat I've, there got, and... I've got some ideas we could, yeah, we'll talk about that one. All right. For oh, now, gosh. for now though, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Hit subscribe, hit like, you know, whatever you want. Realistically, I like getting the feedback from people and talking to you. If you have questions, you know, I, I appreciate being able to answer those or talking through things or helping out any way we can. That's basically my biggest goal. So For me, thank you for watching. Luke? Yeah, take care. Thanks for watching. All right. Talk to you guys later.